Okay, so this is the UI for Boomi Atmosphere. I've used it for quite a while on about two or three projects, and uh, I really like the software. I've used a number of other integration tools, and this one seems to be the most feature-rich and the most powerful. It does have a little bit of a learning curve, but luckily um, Boomi does provide some free training that you can tie into every week, and the su support guys are really good. I've talked to a bunch of guys uh, on the team there, and they're, they're really helpful. So I really like the product. Um, so what you do is you actually install the Boomi Atom on a server, like say behind your firewall, so that way you can access SQL Server or Oracle or, or whatever you want to integrate with. And then the Boomi, Boomi Atom sphere, the UI itself, you actually do the, the actual orchestration of your integration pieces here. So what I've done is I've got some actually some a screenshot of a complex one I, I've done before. So there's one I took a screenshot of and uh, kind of walk it through what you can do with Boomi. So right here I start grabbing some data out of Salesforce. I check to make sure some records exist. Um, I set some properties that I can use during this integration here so I can grab them later. And then I start branching. So I have three paths I run down. So the first path that actually splits up this document into multiple line items. So I basically have, let's say like um, a, a shipment order where I have a shipment header and a bunch of line items that I'm shipping. And so it actually breaks these apart and looks at each one of them individually and then checks to see if it exists in my SQL Server instance. Um, and then it comes on the second path. It does the mapping. It maps my SQL Server data to my Salesforce data. And it goes ahead and it actually sends it over to Salesforce and it grabs the uh, new ID created. And it comes on the third path. It does the same thing where it splits the records again at the line items, does the mapping for Salesforce, and then does some updating in Salesforce again and then we branch off and run another process. So you can do some really complex stuff here in Boomi. Um, if you, it helps if you know um, XML or you're familiar with XML because it's all XML transaction based. So that will help a lot. So what you have here when you have Boomi, you've got basically three different tabs. You've got a build, deploy, and manage. So you do your most work in the build section. So first what you do, you have connector. You set up connectors. Um, this one has a connector set up to a SQL Server database. And then I have one set up to Salesforce. And I had a production and a, a test when we've got production now. And then with each one of these, you set up also operations to do certain things. Like I have one that fetches accounts and fetches equipment and does a lot of, of uh, querying inside of SQL Server. And then the same thing for Salesforce, where I do updates and uh, I do, I think I do some selects in here, stuff like that. So you have the connections and you have the, um, the operations based on those connections. Okay. Then you also have. Um, Maps and these maps are what actually map um, a document in SQL Server to an object in Salesforce. And we'll into that in a second here. And then the big thing here is you have the process. These are the individual process that you're going to run. So I have a small one here um, where I do supply. So this one actually does. It's very similar. It's almost like a data loader. So I basically just query SQL Server for any records that have changed. And this has a view that it's accessing. It actually looks at the at the mapping document and maps the records in SQL Server to Salesforce, and then it shoves them into Salesforce and does an upsert, and then it stops. So we can kind of look at this one real quick here. So um, here is the operation, and the operation is pretty simple. Just select all from this view, but you can do a lot of limitations here: row count, batch count. You can do um, a bunch of different things on this here. Then it actually has um, the connection to the database. So here's the da database connection. And then we have the, the map here. So the map is actually what you can use to say this value in SQL Server goes to this value in Salesforce. So it's, it's pretty decent UI. Um, you actually just grab these fields and drag them and drop them over here onto where you want. And you can have multiple fields or the same field go to multiple fields. So that's kind of, kind of nice here. And you can scroll up and down and see the individual things. And uh, sometimes you can have nested objects in here also. So I think you also do here, you can set default values and then you can show the map because sometimes the mapping gets kind of hairy when you've got hundreds of fields being connected to, to one another. So that's, that's the hardest part there is just doing the, the mappings. Um, they also do a little suggest where you can say, um, you know, it'll look at field names and kind of match them up for you. And then the nice thing about it is also you have revision history. If you did a mapping and then the next day you may change to it and everything blew up, you can revert back to that previous mapping before you have made your changes. So that's a nice feature also. So then this is our, our last operation here. This is actually what does the um, upsert in Salesforce. 
And what you do with these operations is you actually do an import. You, you basically import the object from Salesforce and it creates all of the fields for it. You check the fields you want to have on here and it adds these fields for you and you actually build your qu query here. So um, if it was a select, there'd be a button here that you could click on and actually see the query that was being run and you could actually pass parameters in it if you wanted to. So you can say, you know, where the date range is equal to the last month, or you can say where, you know, something, uh, where the status of it equals true. So you can have a lot of, of parameters that you can pass in at runtime. And then you can also do select, um, filters based on that too when you're doing queries out of Salesforce. But again, this one, I'm just, I'm just upserting some values in here. So let me go ahead and close that. And then what I really love about Boomi is you can run things in test mode. So you can watch the values actually go across the wire for you before you deploy it. That's one of the things that I really missed about um, the other tools was to, it was hard to test things and debug them. So I'm going to go ahead and hit test mode. And it asks me where I want to run this at. You can run it on the server to install the Atom or you can run it in the cloud. They can run everything in the cloud. So if you have Salesforce to, let's say, um, Google Apps, or you have Salesforce Intact, you can, in theory, run that all in the cloud and not have any on-premise software with their Atom at all. So I'm going to run it on our server here. So as I hit Execute, you can watch it making queries through here and actually run it this entire process. All right, so now it's making a request to my Atom on my server, querying the database. And it's taking a little more time than I was hoping. There it goes. So it grabs the data, it does all the, the mappings, and now you can see it pushing the values over to Salesforce. Performing all the upserts, and then it stops. It tells you that it was successfully completed. So if you have a process that, that crashes anywhere in here, you can actually click on this area and see the actual error messages that come across. You can look at the process log, and you can scroll down here and see everything that happened here. You know, we opened the database, we closed it, we ran the selects, uh, we did the updates. You can see any parameters that were being passed on here. You can see any of the shapes that were created. Um, and you can scroll through this log file and see exactly what happened. Now, what I really liked about this is you can click on here and you can look at any kind of connection data. So I might want to see, for some reason, if I was debugging the actual raw XML file that came across the wire from, from the database. And then I can look at the map and I can see the source data again. And I can see here that there's only one document that was sent across. And then here I can see the actual, what was sent to Salesforce. So I can look at each one of the individual XML files that are sent to Salesforce for the upsurge statement. So it connects to the atom and grabs that individual file that was sent over there and it displays that for us. So that way you can kind of debug each record. So if you've got 10 records, and two of them crash, you can look at the values on each one of these records and see what was causing it to crash. And that's really important when you start debugging you know, hundreds or thousands of transactions to try to figure out why something's going on, why something's going wrong, and figure out what's going on. So that's my favorite part about it, is actually the debug process of watching the entire um, process run through. So let me go back here. So now, now that you've got your um, process built and runs and it runs fine. You can schedule it also. So they have a scheduling. I have this one that runs every every day at 4.45 a.m. But you can schedule it multiple times a day and the increments can be as little as one minute at a time and then you can also set the number of retries you want to. So once you get it scheduled you can go ahead and deploy it. So you click deploy up here and you see all your processes and the ones that are in bold have changed. So um, I know I need to deploy these uh, the server to production. So I can look at this and I can see you know, the history of the deployment and I can go ahead and deploy this right here. So I can deploy the latest revisions and I can add any comments I want to it also. So once I deploy it, now I can go ahead and I can start managing these. So I have an atom management where I can see the different atoms I have. In theory, if I had you know, a huge integration process, I could set up multiple atoms on multiple servers and have them running in parallel. So I only have one here. I have one in production, which is a, which you can see is running, and I have one on another server, which is currently stopped. So if I look at this atom right here, I can see some information about it. I can also subscribe to RSS feeds to show me you know, when a process was, was tried and was successful, and then I can have one that also just shows any errors for alerts. And in this pane over here, I can look at all my deployed processes. So I can actually stop all these.